Whether you're a camel owner, wannabe camel owner, or simply an adoring camel fan, you're in the right place for some fun, useful, and interesting camel talk. This is the Camel Connection Podcast. We're your hosts. I'm Tara. And I'm Russell. Join us here for fun learning about camels, how to care for, train, and handle them, plus insider stories and interviews. And also some interesting stories of our lifestyle with camels, the good, the bad, the ugly, and the very funny. Make sure you've subscribed now so you don't miss out on an episode. podcasts are an audio take of our video so be sure to check those out on our blog for lots of how-to visuals and of course lots of camels this is your one and only go-to podcast all about camels Podcast. Here we are. We're here again in the studio. Uh, really? Yeah. yeah. We're, looking really... at, we're looking at getting some new microphones for the next one. Yeah, not really. Yeah, Russell, we are. Russell's like, oh, we were I having. Know, I know of this company that has free, uh, that free for free <laughs> <laughs> microphones. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys, this is what you have to do, all right? You probably want to pause this podcast or you can listen to it after. But go to YouTube and search HBA ad three for free. Yeah, three and for free. we are just like, we had the biggest, like, my chest is actually a bit sore from laughing so hard. Very funny ad. And we just got tears in our eyes. And so, like, it's a thing, the free for free. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. And they actually do a few good ads because then they've got that. They're all Australian, so they like then they got these Aussie kids going talking about how a crocodile ripped his gut out and my head went that way and my eyes went that way. <laughs> it's quite funny. So anyway, yeah. that is what we recommend you do today. Mm. Besides that, Besides we that, have listen a to this camel topic. Yeah, we sure have. And we're, what we're talking about today is bum bum bum. Camel saddles. Oh, I, th- I thought you were going to make me say it. I'm like, no. what's it, what is the topic for today? Camel saddles. <laughs> Camel saddles. Great. Well, yeah. Russell's going to take a big lead on this one because I'm no expert on camel. I mean, I obviously use our camel saddles, but Russell is the one that actually makes these things. I do. And he makes them very well. Oh, and he's you. asked me to be involved and I've kindly denied the uh, opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> I know why because I'm entirely just... Um, she has other things to do. <laughs> she can't be bothered making saddles. Well, that's it? not true because I see how much effort goes into it and it's hours and mm. days and weeks and months mm. and I'm just like, our business ain't going to run if I'm going to build a saddle. Oh, oh right, okay. Mm. So, so maybe when I'm... I'll take a back step there. Maybe it's a retirement plan for me. Oh, my God. <laughs> Uh, no, I really, actually, I really do enjoy making the saddles. You do, and you're very good at it. That's it's... why I don't want to be involved because I don't want to outdo you, you know? Well, I mean, you know, <laughs> when you, you know, it's something that you can either slap together or, you know, put a lot of care and attention towards. Yes. And the end result, I mean, the, the, part of me for saying this, I mean, you know, but um, <laughs> I really like the look of them. Yeah. You know, they're beautiful. Part, oh, they're pardon beautiful. you, that's so rude of you to well, say. <laughs> well, no, well, I don't want to blow my own whistle there, but, but you know, you. to actually make something that you're... You really know that, you know, you've put the time and effort into it and it comes out and you think, that, well, you know, this is actually a piece of art. It's not so much a piece and of equipment, it's a piece of art. What people time. probably don't know, I mean, maybe a lot of these listeners don't know that you actually make saddles, but they also wouldn't know that you make belts. Ah, uh, yes. For one woman in particular. Yes, you. Me. Mm. And he makes really good belts for holding up jeans, mm. you know, that sort of stuff. Mm. So I've got one that I do use every day and I love it. She has. Yeah. Yeah. So you're pretty much a leatherman, but the, not the knife. Not the knife. The, uh, go jack the knife. The, yeah. the, Cut like a knife. <laughs> <laughs> Anything like that. Oh, we talk silly sometimes. Uh, okay, so let's get sometimes. on with this topic about the saddles because we want to keep this, um, you know, to time. Um, basically, what I'm going to do is just talk um, generally about saddles and um, uh, the different type of saddles that are out there, and uh, and then the, you know I'll 
the one that I really do know about, of course, <clears throat> is the Australian style of saddle, and uh, and they're the ones that I I make. Um, but first of all, I mean, you know, ask yourself the question. I mean, you know, you've got your camel, okay, you, you're playing with your camel, you, you're training your camel, you're training yourself to train the camel, um, hopefully using our courses, I mean, because, you know, that uh, we find that uh, that works. Yeah, they're and, good. <laughs> and everyone else seems to think they work too, who've done the course. And, I mean, we've uh, we had taken hundreds of people through it, so there's some evidence there, that's for sure. A little bit, yeah. Um, but, um, yeah, you've got to ask yourself, okay, now, what's next with my camel? Okay, um, what am I, what am I, why, did, why, why do I even get a camel, mm. you know? Um, and that changes it, for people too as they start to work with camels, like, oh, I don't really want to do that anymore, but I want to do this. And For sure. And look, you know, I mean, there's always, you know, the people that are looking at uh, for the dairy situation, okay, mm. where obviously a piece of equipment like a saddle is not necessarily an important piece of equipment. Although a lot of dairies do offer rides at their farm. So. Ah, now that's the point, yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, that's true. Um, but, um, yeah, some people might want to go trekking, some people might want to go riding, they might want to also do commercial riding. Okay, and there's all sorts of things. I mean, you just might want to do picnics, you know, with your husband or wife. Oh, we should and, do that. Well, that's what we've I thought. We've got camels and we've got saddles. Yeah. Um, Sunday picnic. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we just could find a Sunday when we're not working. <laughs> um, so, you know, do you actually need a saddle? And then the question, if you decide no, well, turn off now if you like. <laughs> No, you Turn right at um, this T yeah. intersection. Yeah. <laughs> no, you might as well keep listening. Um, but um, if you think, well, you know, a, yeah, a saddle would be a good idea, then the next question really is, well, what sort of saddle? There's as many different sorts of saddles around the mm-hmm. world, and like we've seen some beautiful saddles, you and know, what from sort of, all around the world. What sort of saddle do you need for your type of camel? Because you can't use a dromedary. Like a dromedary camel saddle on a, a Bactrian camel. No, no, you can't. Yeah. But no. Bactrians come with a built in saddle anyway. Oh, just sit between the two humps. Yeah. yeah. yeah with a piece of cloth in and between. Some stirrups and <laughs> you're pretty <laughs> right you go. to go. Um, <laughs> There's nothing fancy there. So, probably more specifically, we're talking about, about the, dromedary. the dromedary camel saddles because Absolutely. they are, they don't come with a built in saddle. No, they don't. No, mm. no, they don't. Although some Bedouin would disagree because they can magically and mystically sit on the flat part of the camel at the front and never lose their balance. <laughs> or fall off. Or Maybe find they that... do fall off and we just don't know about it. Yeah, I'm sure I there's lots of fools initially, mm. but their balance is amazing. Yeah, no, pretty amazing. I mean, you have really good skills, no doubt about it. But, I mean, you know, if you're like me, I like a saddle. Um, I do. I like to sit on a saddle and uh, know that that saddle is comfortable to start with um, and that it's... um, Not going to break. It's It's nothing worse than the girth. Like, I mean, I think of the horse days when girths, when the saddle would be too loose or a girth would actually break and you pretty much go off with the saddle. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, yeah, different types of saddles. And, uh, and like, you know, when you ha- keep searching around your images like on Google and you see the different types of uh, camel saddles that there are around the world, there's some beautifully handcrafted wooden mm-hmm. saddles. Um, I know, CD and uh, CD, is that he say? Mm. CD, 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 CD yeah. Yep. Yep. Um, he showed us a, a beautiful saddle from um, his home. His Tureg. Yeah, yeah, and you know, beautifully handcrafted wooden saddle, gorgeous. And we've thing. seen the Mongolian saddles, obviously, as well for the Bactrian camels. Which yeah, it's a pretty simple setup. Settle, yep, yep. Yeah, um, and, um, and then India. Yes. Um, Nitha went ahead and showed us a beautiful saddle that he was making as mm-hmm. well, very uh, ornate. Decorative. And yeah, mm. ornate. Um, yeah, so there's all those sorts of options out there um, that you could have, but you know. Would they suit you or, you know, is your purpose for decorative purposes or, yes. you know, um, you know, are you going to change your mind somewhere down the track and think about tracking, for mm. example, where you want to attach things to these saddles? Um, you know, it, it's a personal thing in many ways and you have to do your research and your homework. Mm. And it's not, we don't have the same luxury as the horse world where you can get dressage saddle, western saddle, all purpose saddle, jumping saddle, and like all these, you know, different types of saddles. And it's just very overwhelming to start with. But I mean, you know, there's definitely, so that's sort of 
in in the horse sense and in the camel stuff it's 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 re- it's a much more rare find to find something that um is suitable for you and what you need oh and look um, and even try to find a saddle mm. is difficult i mean occasionally you might see a second hand saddle um for sale on you know mm. Some second hand. Well, there's no manufacturers of these types of saddles. They're all handcrafted. Well, that's right. And that actually came to um, our realization just recently from um, someone overseas who went ahead and uh, requested to us that uh, we made something like, what was it? 50. 50, 50, 50, yeah. 50 saddles. Then it went it? to 100. I don't know how oh, that yeah, happened. Oh, yeah, somehow the number changed. But anyway, 100 saddles and it was urgent. Yeah, and they wanted them like in a week. And we're like, eh. Yeah. Yeah, we kind of need 10 doesn't years to way. do that. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't work that way. Because each one of these saddles that I make, I mean, we're talking about you know, a good two, three weeks to make one. Mm, oh, and the rest. Um, yeah. In between oh. children and stuff as well. Yeah, oh, yeah. But, and uh, your hand cramps and your arthritis and, you know, getting sore feet, coffee breaks. <laughs> my God. <laughs> it's, it, look, I mean, I don't know if you know Russell, but I know Russell and he's a pretty casual worker. <laughs> <laughs> when he's working, he's working. But, I mean, he takes a lot of breaks, which is fine. That's not a criticism. It's all good. I mean, I could certainly learn something from that. But uh, you... you know why? <laughs> I'll tell you the reason why. I mean, especially with making saddles. I mean, you know, I've got my mind set on making, say, for example, a strap. Mm. And I go ahead and put that attention to detail. And the energy that I put into that making that, that mm. strap... Um, once I've made it, I just said, right, that's it. I've got to break from this. You know what scares me about doing a project like that is just thinking, like, like having a break. This is why I don't have a lot of breaks. Yeah. And then just forgetting how, how, like, forgetting that mentality on how good I was doing it then. Because I, I don't know, like, I've had, I've had children. I've birthed them, right? And with every child, you lose more and more of your, your brain. <laughs> Right. And, and like, I don't know what's going on? You here. know, I'm just like, I just don't want to forget this. So I'm just like, right, punch it out, punch it out. So, yeah, that's uh-huh. that's how I feel. Okay. Anyway. Yeah. So, um, uh, what were we talking about? Uh, uh, the styles the, of saddles. The different styles. So, yeah, there are quite a number of different styles. If you're in the marketplace for having a look at uh, saddles or you're wanting to make your own, um, making your own, well, I mean, you know, that's, a, that's another ball game again but uh, if you're in the marketplace for looking at different types of uh, saddles you've got to ask yourself well, what for number one what for is it decorative are you looking at the decorative thing i mean you know you're doing your photo shoot so you're doing you know i don't know um, photos with models and all that sort of thing mm. for advertising you know I don't know, peanuts, or so I don't know, you know, whatever it might I be. I think they use elephants for those things. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that could do. So, um, yeah, the decorative style um, would be of an advantage to you. Mm. All right. But if you're looking at something like um, uh, rides, mm. for example, now I do know of the um, metal frame that's covered with um, oh, sort of a sponge really isn't it uh, mm-hmm. uh, um, what do they call is this the one that's frame? popular in the states yeah 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 yeah, yeah the metal frame um that uh, people basically are sitting almost on top of the camel, they do sit on top, uh, of, the on top of the camel yeah they're just itself, the cage yes. is something for them to hold on to is that what it's called the, the cage. cage well a bar uh, yeah, yeah a bar whatever yeah um and look, that that seems like a reasonable sort of arrangement, um, you know, for for quick rides around, you know, the ten minute um, fair rides. Um, what more can I say about that? I have not well, that, had experience with those types of saddles. No, we've only seen them. Yeah, only seen them, and um, you know, they look functional mm. uh, um, for the purpose. Um, probably lightweight. Mm. They are of, uh, aluminium or something yeah. like that, and they're strapped onto the camel, and yeah. probably you know. But, but people aren't actually sitting on that frame. Have you seen that? No, they're not sitting they're, on the frame. Not sitting on the frame. The frame sits the on the camel. The frame's there for the, them to hang on to more yeah. than anything. If 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 you want to talk like that. Um, okay, so then I don't got, think they come up in Google images. I don't know. I've googled haven't, camel haven't. saddles, and I don't think that the the metal frame comes up. Yeah. Um, I don't even know what they're actually called. No. Um, but, um, yeah, we, I mean, you want to go to the next point and talk about... Yep. Like, yep. So obviously, got, that's one purpose, and then yeah. you've got... And then you've got, um, like, pack saddles. Now, these were extensively used and basically made out the of... The Afghani a, pack of saddles. Yeah, yeah. The, the, that's right, um, and used around the world, um, mm. different locations. Um, 
where they've got a metal, not a metal, sorry, a wooden frame or yoke, if you mm. like, um, and a, a <clears throat> pad on either side of the the actual wooden frame mm-hmm. it covers the almost the, you know, the top part of the body of the camel mm-hmm. and then there's got wooden bars if you like um, that crosses a long ways along the animal and any boxes or any materials that you're you you're wanting to carry then they're tied on mm. to these the frame of this Pack. And what I learned um, when we were on the set for the movie Tracks and helping out with some camel action there is that um, these pack saddles, um, some people traditionally still don't use girths. That's right. That they actually stay on the camel from weight. That's right. If a camel bucked, I don't know how well that would stay on. Well, packing that type of saddle is um, a, a skill in mm. you know, making sure that left-hand side weighs the same as the right-hand side. Mm. And look, there's some beautiful photos, um, old photos from the Afghan days here in Australia where they're carrying things like pianos and, yeah. uh, and iron girders mm-hmm. for railway bridges and stuff like this and beautiful, beautiful photos mm-hmm. of these pack saddles. The only problem I found with these pack saddles and thinking about tracking was that they're heavy. And you I can't carry really ride on them? Not uh, really. Not really. Well, you could, I suppose. I mean, you could modify it and all that sort of thing, mm. but um, it's not designed they're, they're, they're for that. They're pack saddles, yeah. It is a pack saddle and... I know that when I've been trekking by myself um, out in the desert, I've got to think about, you know, what I am capable of um, as far as being able to lift things up. Mm. And a pack saddle, I would really struggle. Is it heavier than... It's heavier and also a little bit more awkward. So in kilograms, Um, what do you think? Oh, I don't know, 40 maybe? I don't know, something like that. Oh, okay. So they're heavy. Because, well, there's a lot of padding. Yeah. And, um, and, you know, it's good for the camels fast, but that's for a lot of weight for that camel to be carrying as well and for that padding. And so when tracking by myself or, you know, with um, people, um, the most, the very most that I've ever packed up a, a camel would be um, just under 200 kilograms, mm. which to a camel, a fully grown camel trained into it, is quite They're fine. Cool uh, that. so that's yeah. easy, um, easy for a camel. Um, yeah, but what we're camels. talking about is a lot of weight um, with those pack saddles that, the, say, the Afghan traders mm-hmm. uh, used to carry. And those pack saddles would have been perfect for that job. Mm-hmm. Um, two operators, mm-hmm. usually, um, for the, the train of camels. And uh, therefore, two people can lift that type of saddle. Mm. So what I decided, um, and this is something that perhaps everyone might want to consider, if you're thinking, well, what sort of saddle do I actually want here, you know, and, uh, okay, I'm not quite sure of my purpose. Perhaps it is for a riding operation. Mm -hmm. Perhaps it is for a trekking operation. Um, Or or all the above. all the above. Then you may want to consider the Australian style of saddle. Mm. I wonder where, like, I mean, I don't know if you know the history. Like, they call it this Australian-style mm, saddle. I don't but know where it comes from. Yeah, mm. I, I really do wonder who really initiated, mm. you know, its style and all that sort of stuff. It's been changed yeah. over the years. Look, I think that um, someone went ahead and had a look, had a look at the, um, the traditional pack saddle mm. and thought, well, some metal there would be able to do, and mm. perhaps if I reduce the pads down to suit and then... You know, put some seats on it, and yeah, you know, I think it just evolved. Yeah, but, but it'd be interesting to find out. I don't. Someone know should write a book about it. Aha! There's the history book. of the Australian style camel saddle. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, yeah, that might be. So a the all-purpose camel saddle. Like, if you guys mm-hmm. have seen us, um, you know, on social with some pictures we post with camels and their saddles on, you you kind of know what we're talking about. Yeah. If not, you can just head to our website and have a look. Yeah. Or Google it because I think some of our pictures come. Up. Yeah. But it has two seats. Yeah, it's got a front and back it seat. It doesn't have to have two seats, but it does have two no, seats. No, it doesn't have to have two seats. In fact, what I've seen um, is back seat. Mm. And in the front part, um, this was actually um, something... We, uh, anyway, I'll talk about that soon. Um, in the front part was, uh, was nothing. But what um, some of the early explorers used to have on that front part, instead of a seat, they'd actually have a table. 
And they used to have their <laughs> maps it. and, uh, and yeah. journals and things like that. Yeah. So that as they were riding along, they were able to sketch, draw, you know, do whatever. And I've seen people pack their swags, obviously, at the front and bags. and you know, whatever. I mean, even with two seats, you can do that as well. Like, yeah. if there's two leather seats, then you, the person sits on the back and the, the swag's at the front or whatever, something like that. Yeah. Um, there's so many ways you can, I mean, pack, like... There's so many ways you can pack the all-purpose saddle. That's what I've been really impressed with, the, you know, working with the saddle for, you know, seven years now ever since I've met you and Camels. Yeah. Um, in just how versatile they are. They well, are. Uh... And, you know, like um, we can also um, make them into um, water-carrying crates as well. Yeah. You know, so like if we want to go for an extended period of time, we can just adjust the frames with some welding and stuff to carry extra water, with yeah. jerry cans of water. Um, and, you know, you can put like four swags on one saddle as yeah. well as four bags. Yeah, um, yeah I'm, I'm, I'm impressed with how versatile they are. I mean, I couldn't think of why you'd want anything else, to be honest. <laughs> well, I mean, the thing is, is that if you are after, you know, putting more weight, mm. I mean, you know, like think of the operation that uh, I have been operating for a long time now. Um the camel tracks. The camel tracks, mm. yeah, or even, you know, cross-country, whatever. Um, but your saddlebags, just made out of canvas bags, basically, mm. but they've got clips, um, the carabiner clips, mm -hmm. and they clip onto rings that are actually welded onto the um, onto the, the frame mm -hmm. of the of, of the, um, the saddle. Um, loose loose O-rings, uh, uh, no, uh, two-inch rings, really, um, that are attached to the, the frame. Mm. Um, by um, D rings, D rings. Yeah, that's that's it. Yeah, um, but the bags are being able to they can, they can shift around a bit like that. Quite fine. I mean, being canvas, you know, it's a strong material as long as you get the non ripped um, And canvas. there's the option to ride as well. I mean, you well know, our, our kids time. ride up the top while all the packs and the swags are that's on. That's right. And, so yeah, yeah. There's um, all sorts of different uh, ways of being able to do that. So, so I, su I suppose yeah. as, as the individual, you just need to decide, you know, uh, you know, do I want to go trekking only and not ride or do I, um, you know, want to have a saddle that is more all purpose that I can trek and ride and, you know, do whatever in yeah. between um, yeah. or, you know, is it, is it going to be something commercial like the shorter rides? I, I know more so in the States, you know, with that, the, um, the cage situation, it's not a cage, it's, it's more a of cage. a bar. bar. Saddle, thing bar saddle. I'm not sure what I'm sorry called. guys if anyone if anyone can actually tell us the actual name of that yeah. type of saddle well they might be called a saddle it might be called a saddle yeah. I mean you know but if anyone can do that that'd be really good yeah because um we don't we know we don't know we don't know what it is yeah. um yeah so it's up to the individual and, and how they choose their style of, of saddle absolutely really. yeah. yeah I do know that um a full string of sa of camels uh you know whether it be two four six eight camels whatever how many camels that have got good looking quality made gear on them it looks professional mm. uh, now if you're in the game of being commercial personally what i look at um and this is just a personal thing it doesn't have to be um uh, Biblical. Any, well, it doesn't. Yeah, it's just me. I mean, Jesus if, I, said. if I look, if I look, say, for example, at um, at some um, hang gliding club, all right, and I'm looking. Hang gliding. Yeah, I'm just giving an example here. And, and they I, had holes in their wings. Yeah, well, that's right. It, you know, if it looked like old material, and you know, and sort of the buckles didn't look good, and you know, the the, the equipment hadn't been looked after or anything yeah. like that, I'd be. Querying whether or not I'd be going hang gliding. No, I wouldn't. Um, you know, and I know, you know, from the customer point of view, looking at uh, a string of camels with good looking gear, I feel confident that that owner actually knows what they're doing for some reason. Well, and also the gear's going to withhold whatever's it'll, happening. It'll last, that's yeah. right. And I felt that way about, um, you know, like, and I, I didn't realise I did this until we were in the States last year and we went for that horse ride, right. um, you know, through the Rocky Mountains. Right. 
And I didn't realise until just now that I was actually looking at the gear before I even got on. Right. Like, even though they were checking girth and stuff like that, I yeah. double-checked just to... Did you? But yeah. yeah, I did. I don't know it was a habit thing, but... Yeah, interesting. Yeah. yeah. I def- and I think that and a lot of people do that as customers. Mm. Mm. I think that they... Uh, oh, some people don't. Do some people just get on. Because they it. don't know you. Mm. Uh, they don't know you, the operator. Mm. Uh, you can say... I mean, for example, you don't know who your pilot is. In an aircraft. No. Right? You don't go up to the pilot and say, oh, excuse me, can I see your licence? How long have you been flying for? Mm. Um, You know, what sort of planes do you fly? Right, we take the assumption that they can fly a plane. Mm -hmm. But what we do look at is how clean the aeroplane is, mm-hmm. how, how professional the uh, operators look. The type of um, beverages they serve. Well, yeah, <laughs> and, you know, other blankets, you know, in a plastic bag, you mm. know, so that we think they're, they're hygienic. Mm. Uh, so these little things makes us feel more comfortable about getting on that aeroplane and going for that ride. And mm-hmm. we just assume that the pilot also is just as professional. Mm-hmm. And uh, and I think that customers, that's the way that they think about commercial, yeah. even camel riding. Yeah, and, uh, that's a and good point. Yeah, the gear, it does make a difference. Yep, yeah. All right. Um, so anyway, I want to get back to the Australian saddle because that's what I know most about. Okay. And uh, if someone else wants to make a podcast about, you know, X number of X, Y, Z saddle, please do because, uh, you know, it's all good information, I'm sure. Um, so yeah, Aussie saddles. I found that the the style, and uh, it's it's good for riding. It's good for per, per, personal riding as well, but or commercial riding. You know, for the track. personal or commercial. Yeah, yeah. Um, trekking definitely. I, I wouldn't be without it because um, it was so simple. It's a simple operation. Mm. Clip, clip. The bags are on. Mm-hmm. You know, a uh, bit of rope with. Uh, and you can do it as a single person because yep. if you have the pack, just comparing it to the pack saddle. It's a two-person job. You oh, can't a load lift. one I could end. Not lift one of those now. Well, and you can't load one side, otherwise the saddle pop oh, yeah, on the that's ground. True. That's so, true. So, um, I mean, I know when I we've both done our own personal treks, we've been able to to load the camels, saddle the camels, and load the camels by ourselves. So. Yeah, that's mm. right, exactly. And look, talking about the frames and the materials in the the, the Australian saddle, I mean, we build ours out of steel. Um, the steel tube because we're Australia <laughs> steel <laughs> steel got, working we've got steel that's right <laughs> Australia <laughs> steel we've got working <laughs> but steel's strong and um, you know it's easily welded up etc and uh, and once it's been professionally welded up um, I always outsource on that because mm. I'm not a good welder um, then I know full well that those um, frames are going to last so mm-hmm. I don't want to be out there in the desert uh, and have my frames break. I would just say, you don't want to be anywhere with a broken frame, no, that's broken true. anything on a saddle. That's true. But, I mean, if you're close by, I mean, you could just take that saddle off and put it back that's in the true. back of the car and mm. get it fixed next week. Mm. Um, but if you're out in the desert, you rely on your gear. Mm. And that's why when I do make my saddles, that's, and that's why, why I we... make them strong enough to be able to survive without me having to put any attention into repairs. Mm-hmm. Because I don't want Well, I mean, to we've that. never had to repair a saddle the frame. The only thing that we've had to do in saddles is if we've been brushing past trees and mm. it's ripped some of the Or a camel likes to chew one a of the pads. camel likes to chew the pads. Yes, mm. we've got one of them. Um, mm. But that's also a good point about aluminium because a lot of people go for the aluminium saddles, mm. which we've never had, no, um, never admittedly, had but I can understand why you do because they're lighter and all that sort of stuff. Yep. But for trekking purposes, I don't know of anybody who, Who's taking them trekking? No, maybe because they took our advice. (laughs) Because they obviously bend a lot easier and things like that. So if that well, potentially from my understanding, and if anyone you know has been trekking with aluminium saddles, do reach out to us. Absolutely. Um. So yeah, it's and by trekking, I mean a couple of months out there. Yeah. Right. I'm not talking. You know, just today and tomorrow. Yeah. 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 Heavy duty. I mean, yes. it's just one of those things. It doesn't matter if you're going for a day or two days or whatever. Like, the less that goes wrong, the more you can oh, enjoy it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Look, if you're going to put your money And having in. that little bit of extra weight, you know, for you to pick up is... And it takes just... I mean, you know, you get used to it. I mean, obviously, the more trekking that you do, the more you get used to picking up the saddle. And oh, you get, you get muscle memory. 
We get muscle memory and you also uh, get stronger. <laughs> well, yeah, but it is a muscle memory thing and there's a technique in how to uh, lift, up, lift we the We have camel. a video on that on YouTube, mm, actually, how do. to saddle a camel. Look, the, the And thing, I, I was saddling the camel too. The thing is... Which is, that, is a good point because I'm you, small. Can I tell you a point here? <laughs> the thing is, is, that, is if you're going to make an investment into your saddle and, um, and you want to make sure that... You know, your investment is worthwhile. Well, you go for something that, you know, one, um, is strong, okay? The type of leather, how strong the leather is and that uh, the stitching inside that leather is, you know, as strong as what it could ever be. Uh, you don't want to be half assing it, I suppose, is the only way about it. And that's my, my opinion anyway. You know, you want to make sure that everything's going to be good so that just a regular once-a-year maintenance on your saddle a uh, little bit, you know, oiling of the leather and that sort of stuff is pretty much all you need to do. And if, you know, something does happen to your saddle, it's easy. It's easy to go ahead and patch up. Like, I mean, you know, we use collar check uh, on the pads, which is that woolen blanket. Uh, and, yeah, occasionally it might rip because you pass by a tree, something like that. And it's easy to repair because you can just put a patch on. Now... From a novice point of view, looking at a, a, a pad, a saddle pad that has patches on it, you'd think, oh, that's you know, not looking very good. But I know as a camelier that every time I put a patch on um, a, a pad that's ripped because of a tree or something like that that we've walked past, I know full well that that pad is actually stronger than when I made it originally because of that patch. Wow. Okay, so, you know, it, you know these little things really do count in the end result. So there you go. That's pretty much that. And maintenance can be easy as easy as just oiling the leather once a year. Mm. Yeah. If that. Mm. That's it. So there you go. That's that's what I've got to say about the saddles. Okay. Yeah. Oh, do you want me to say something? You would. <laughs> I know you're going to. So what we're writing to do actually is going to have a Q and A webinar on the on the on the Australian saddle. All right, I can't talk well, about it is, the Well, let's just say it's the all-purpose camel saddle because yeah. it really is all-purpose. Right. Um, we don't know it's really the Australian. I think that's just something people have nicknamed it the Australian-style saddle, but it's probably not. So I think, mm. to be fair to everybody, we'll just call it the all-purpose camel saddle. Oh, okay. <laughs> don't All you right. think? Yep. Because it is all-purpose. APCS. What? Yeah, that's the acronym. Okay. Um, yeah, I don't really like that. No, I can't <laughs> didn't come up with anything. Okay, so, yeah, we're going to hold a webinar. And it's going to be all about camel saddles. It won't just be Q&A. Mm -hmm. There will actually be information in there about camel saddles. Yep. Um, the different styles from around the globe. We're going to find some Google images. Yeah. And, well, Russell will because it's Russell's webinar because this is his expertise. Mm -hmm. And I'll be helping with the technical stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and like yeah. where's the on button? Yeah, where's the on <laughs> button? How do I talk? You know, all that mm -hmm. stuff. Yeah. Um, Yes, yeah, so um, it will be all about the camel saddle, basically, mm. and the different styles from around the world. We'll get as many images as we can find and, mm -hmm. and um, basically, you know, try and sort out for you which style is right for you in, in a picture yeah. and talkative format. And you have the opportunity, to obviously, to ask questions. Yeah. So there will be a link attached to this podcast, won't there? Oh, yeah, the link's right the, here. The link? Yeah. You've got it? Here. Good. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, people can't see you hold up your hand. Um, yeah, because you're like, is there a link attached well, to our voices? Well, so if you click the link... <laughs> Wouldn't that be cool, though? You get registered for the webinar. Like if you, you heard a voice, someone says something and they're like, the link appears or something. That'd right. be cool. It's coming. I'm sure of it. Okay. Yeah. So wherever you're listening to this, find a link for that free um, All About Camel Saddles webinar. You know, um, so wherever you're listening to, look at in the description or on our um, website, you'll find it um, there so you can register because that's happening next week. Um, we're not going to drag it out too long. Mm -hmm. And um, happening next week on Wednesday, Australian time. Mm. Yeah. So mm. Tuesday in the States. So we'd love to have you there. That'd be awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Get to know a bit, bit about the saddles. That'd be great. Great. Excellent. Thanks. No worries. Thanks for tuning All in. All right, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. See you later. Okay. Bye. Bye. If you like this information we've just shared with you, you'll be sure to love the free camel eBooks and training videos that we're giving away. 
we're giving away two camel ebooks introduction to camels and introduction to camel training plus in our bonus camel training videos we take you through training and handling camels built on connection and trust and we also share how to understand a camel's way of thinking this is gold information that you don't want to miss so be sure to sign up now to get your free ebooks and training videos over at camelconnection.com